Hi everybody, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty where we women over 50 use great skincare, makeup, and health and fitness to look and feel our best. Now today I'm excited to bring you the next video in my Slim You in 22 series. This is video number six on intermittent fasting. In just a few minutes I'll be showing you how I used intermittent fasting to lose weight and keep it off for good and to do that very easily. But first, here's a look at my outfit of the day. It's a leopard print tank top from Amazon. I also have it in royal blue. I love it and I will probably get many more colors of it because it's super comfortable, comes through the wash just beautifully. Now I actually have this on backwards because I am short-waisted and I need a little bit more length from here to here. This is how this looks. So if you are not short-waisted like me, you might want to wear it the other way, in which case the neck comes down just a little bit more here. It looks almost exactly the same, just a little bit of a lower neck. And I will be linking all of the details of the outfit and all the jewelry that I have on, and it is from Amazon, and it is all very reasonable in price, and I think very glam. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the 50 Plus Beauty family, I hope you'll subscribe to this channel and or give this video a great thumbs up. Okay, let us get down to this. I am so excited to bring this to you because if you followed my channel, you know that I have a history of eating problems. Inside, I have what I consider to be my hunger monster. And in fact, I did a video about that early on in my channel about how I overcame the hunger monster. And in a nutshell, and I will tell you, I'm going to link all five other videos in this series below if you're interested in following along with me on a weight loss journey. Because in this series, I'm sharing those things with you that I learned over years and years and years of the school of hard knocks, trying every diet known to man and being voraciously hungry, being a fast food, junk food addict, that kind of thing, to me today where I enjoy low carb eating. I'm really almost never hungry. I get to eat what I want within reason, everything that's on my low carb food list, which is basically the paleo eating plan, which is meats, lean meats, veggies and fruits. And I really try to stick with whole foods, get away from the boxes and bags and all of that stuff. I'm not perfect on that by any means. And I'm not perfect on this eating plan or on this intermittent fasting 100% of the time. But I figure if you do this kind of thing, healthy eating 90% of the time, you will have the same benefits that I have, which is that I lost weight early on and that I was able to keep off my weight. And it also has other health and beauty benefits, and that is intermittent fasting, which I will be sharing with you in this video. And I will tell you that in this video, I'm not going to give you the scientific research behind intermittent fasting, but everything I say is backed by scientific research. And I'm going to post links to three different YouTube videos videos below. One is a great one by Thomas DeLauer that had millions of views. He's very much of an expert on intermittent fasting. And then there's a video on intermittent fasting basics with Dr. Ken Berg, who again really espouses the benefits of intermittent fasting. And then there is a fascinating TED talk about intermittent fasting, which I will also link below. And forgive the thunder sounds and the rain sounds that you hear. I'm in the makeup room all comfy and cozy, but outside it is really loud and we're having a huge storm here in Kansas. Okay, first, if you're not familiar with intermittent fasting, it is basically every day increasing the number of hours that we don't eat. And a simple way to look at it is you just skip breakfast. You eat your last meal of the day, finish it by seven or eight o'clock at night, and then you go through breakfast, you don't eat anything, and then you start eating your first meal maybe around noon. And here is a look at that intermittent fasting made simple. Before noon, you're able to have coffee and tea without creamers or sugars. I suppose you could have artificial sweeteners. However, I no longer eat those. But before noon every day, you're just having coffee, preferably black, tea and water. And then from noon to 8 p.m., that's when you eat your breakfast and lunch. And the idea there is to keep those foods pretty healthy and to try not to eat between meals. But you basically eat all of your foods at breakfast and at lunch. And I, of course, do low carb eating. And I would really encourage you ladies who are not yet doing the low carb way of eating to really investigate that because there's really no reason we need cakes, pies, cookies, that kind of thing. We don't need the bread. We don't need the rice. We don't need the potatoes. But as long as we're getting a lot of fruits and vegetables and lean meats, we can really stay healthy on that. And those are foods that are all enriching for our bodies. Then on the daily intermittent fasting schedule, after 8 p.m. at night, you no longer eat. You have water and tea. I suppose you could have decaf coffee, something like that. 
but then you get your sleep and then you get up the next morning and you miss breakfast and you go through the rest of the day just like you did the day before. And let's briefly take a look at a simplified way to look at the things you are eating and drinking on a given intermittent fasting day. And basically you have a fasting window of 16 hours and a feeding window of eight hours. And during your feeding window where you're eating your lunch and your dinner, you have protein, low glycemic index, carbohydrates, healthy fats, probiotics, and your supplements. And then in your fasting period, you're having water, black coffee, tea, and zero calorie drinks. And again, you can't have cream in your coffee. And I learned you can't even have collagen in your coffee because it has 40 calories and breaks your fast. As you know, I've been taking collagen for about two and a half, three years now. And I used to take it in my morning black coffee, but now I wait until lunch and that's when I have my supplements, my collagen in my coffee, and then I eat lunch and dinner. And then after 8 a.m. in the evening, I don't eat until around noon the next day. Now I'll show you some of the benefits of intermittent fasting. The first is clearer skin, and it says glowing results. Fasting speeds up the waste removal process, helping to repair damaged cells. And what that is, it's something called autophagy. And that is that when you're eating all the time, your cells are developing debris and throwing off debris. But if you're eating all the time, you have no way to expel those toxins from your body. So that refuse and those damaged pieces of cells are just building up in your system, clogging up your hair, skin, nails, everything. But in autophagy, when you fast for the up to 16 hours or maybe even a few more hours, actually the benefits of fasting start at 16 hours. So if you can make it 17 or 18 hours, that is even better. But in those more extended periods of intermittent fasting in the last few hours, your body goes into what is called autophagy. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. And basically that is where all that cellular debris that your cells are kicking off actually get burned up by the other cells of your body and basically it's kind of like taking out the trash and and really i have noticed huge skin benefits since i've been doing intermittent fasting a lot of you are very kind and you say i'm aging backwards which i don't think i am i just turned 64 like four days ago my husband just turned 65 today Medicare day, yay, although I will tell you, Medicare is not free, I always kind of thought it was. But anyway, even though I'm getting older, I think the quality of my skin is staying very good, and I credit that in large part to daily intermittent fasting. Okay, a second benefit to intermittent fasting is weight loss. Quick slimming, it says fasting intermittently promotes a naturally lower calorie intake, as well as promoting adipose thermogenesis. And it says that can prevent obesity and metabolic disorders. And I really noticed the quick slimming benefits of intermittent fasting. And if you're like me and you have an extra five to 10 pounds to lose and you're not intermittent fasting at this time, believe me, if you start missing breakfast and using intermittent fasting, that weight will just melt away. It is truly amazing. Number one, you're not having the calories of the third meal. Unless you pile up on calories at your lunch and dinner, you're going to lose weight naturally. But also intermittent fasting has been shown to increase our body's metabolism, which has great weight loss benefits. Now, a third benefit of intermittent fasting is preserving your muscle. It says intermittent fasting is a more effective way to preserve muscle while dropping fat. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn even at rest. And that is so true. Now, I am not weightlifting as hard as I used to, but I still do lift the little dumbbell weights and I have kind of a weight routine. It's milder than it used to be, but I've noticed that since I've started intermittent fasting, it seems like I'm able to keep my muscle and burn fat a little more effectively. Really do like that benefit. Now, the fourth benefit they mention is brain power. They call that the Einstein effect says the shock of fasting leads the brain to create new cells, which promotes mental capacity and can improve mood. Fasting also significantly lowers the risk of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And really, isn't that a scary thought, the idea of getting Alzheimer's and or Parkinson's disease? I have a very good friend who has Parkinson's, and it is a very challenging disease, and we really don't want to get that. And if intermittent fasting can reduce our chances of both Alzheimer's and or Parkinson's disease, I think it is worth a try. Well, that is a look at something very essential to my weight control plan, and that is intermittent fasting. And if you are doing it now and have had good or bad results with it, any opinions at all about intermittent fasting, I hope you'll go ahead and share your comments in the comments section below the video, because I and a lot of other viewers love to read the comments because you can pick up other opinions on various things that are being discussed in the video. 
Often I pick up ideas for future videos based upon your comments and I really appreciate that. And if you're interested in all things that help us look and feel our best at 40, 50, 60 plus, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be just great too. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And this one involves Dr. Lance Parker. As those of you who follow my channel know, I have been in therapy with Dr. Lance Parker, who is a licensed clinical psychologist. He has all the right credentials here in Wichita, Kansas. He also sees patients over Zoom. And I actually have a friend who is now seeing Dr. Parker over Zoom. He is a cognitive behavioral psychologist, which I think is the absolute best kind. And I have experience with cognitive behavioral psychologists and with psychologists in general, as I grew up with two psychologist parents. And early in my working career, I worked for my parents' company, which was a behavioral managed care company. My father had definite opinions about the validity of psychology and the good and the bad aspects of psychology. And my dad always felt like the therapy when you went back to your childhood and you said, why are you so miserable? Well, your mom was probably mean to you. Your dad was bad to you. Let's come in every week and go through the misery together. Well, I did that kind of therapy early on, you know, when I was much younger and delving into the misery of my past, we can all dig up miserable things. It just made me more miserable. Well, the reason I love seeing Dr. Parker and going through this cognitive behavioral approach is Cognitive behavioral means training the mind, training the mind to actually be happier because a lot of us are in negative kind of thinking patterns. We're in what if thinking patterns, we feel guilt, all of these other things. And a lot of it kind of boils down to just in a layman's way of speaking, kind of sloppy mental habits that we have, having a habit of negative thinking, having a habit of having anxiety over things you can't control, that kind of thing. Okay, I'll link Dr. Parker's information below if you'd like a Zoom therapy visit with him or he also has a YouTube channel and I'll link that below as well. But basically yesterday I asked him the question, you know, Dr. Parker, I've learned these four tools that you gave me, but I had a really bad situation happen over the weekend and I got upset and I got angsty and I was so depressed about it and I just could not make those tools work for me. And I said to him, Dr. Parker, in those times where you go through a situation where your life just kind of goes off the rails and you can't seem to pull yourself back up, what do you do? And so he kind of gave me a three-step process to do that and I'll share that with you right now. And it ends up in a little Bible verse, which I think is a really good thing. He didn't add that, but I went ahead and added that. And actually the reason I went to therapy to begin with is because he has a form of therapy that he can do to help you deepen your religious faith, which I thought was very fascinating. And that's one of the reasons I am seeing him for sure. That and just all around happiness. Anyway, this is what he said. He said, when you're upset about something, and I want you to think about your life, when you get upset about like a family member or person at work, something like that, you get upset about something, what do you do? He said, the first thing is to belly breathe. And what that is, is when we're upset, we're doing this and we're just breathing very shallowly. We're breathing into the top part of our lungs. But when we relax, we're belly breathing, which is like where your belly goes up. And basically you just take a few deep belly breaths. And that just tends to calm you down. You can feel the relaxation starting to kind of wash over you. And step two is to clear your mind. Just sit for a moment and deeply belly breathe and just let everything go from your mind. Just clear your mind because we have control over the things that we put in our mind. And when we clear our mind, it just gets that crazy situation out of our mind. And then we have a choice. We can choose to go back and think about that problem situation. And that is a choice. We can do that. If we feel that would be beneficial to us, we can go think about that yet again or we can switch our thoughts to something more positive, something that uplifts us and helps us feel good. And several times in my first five sessions with Dr. Parker, he has brought up a Bible verse that helps us have an idea of the things that we should think on for happiness. And it comes right out of the Bible. It is Paul talking in Philippians. And here it is, Philippians 4 verses 8 and 9. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is honest, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, whatever is excellent, if anything is worthy of praise, think on these things. If anything is worthy of praise, think on these things. 
And you can think about good things about yourself. You can think about your blessings. You can think about people in your life who are particularly good. Just anything beautiful and lovely. And actually, I can just feel the tension melting out of me just reading that and trying to think on those things. And one thing that Dr. Parker always reminds me of that I think could benefit you too is that we don't have control over a lot of different things in our life, but we do have control over ourselves, our feelings, and what we think. And if we use our minds and thoughts in a better, more productive way, we can think our way to a happier life. Take care, and I'll see you in my next video.